almost be able to walk under the first one. Hey, my name's Kay, I'm 34 years old. My biggest right. dream is that all my kids make it in life. Seriously, that's the truth. I'm Richard, I'm 14 years old. When I finished school, I was thinking of being a graphics designer. My name is Caitlin, and I'm 12 years old. When I grow up, I want to be an explorer. My name is Alex. Oh, I'm 11 years old. When I grow up, I'd like to be a fireman. My name is Alan. I am nine years old. I want to be a teacher. My name is Brianna. I'm eight years old. When I grow up, I want to be a police officer. My name is Zachary. I'm eight years old. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. When we moved to Angus, people weren't that, like, they didn't really pick on us as much because, like, we're all in the same type of thing. Like, everyone goes to the second hands or anything. But in Barrie, like, everyone went to Old Navy and everything, and more people picked on us or anything. Fire, freezing, six, split. And there was... We got our lunch from, uh... From garbage or something. Garbage, yeah. Garbage cans and stuff. And everybody called us dirty and stuff. Going over here. They said like we lived in a cardboard box and everything, and that we we like had baths out in the rain or anything. Nobody wants to be poor. Nobody wants to be looked down upon. We're people, so we're poor. It's what we are, not who we are. Kay Rice and her family drifted from town to town in southern Ontario, struggling, like many of the rural working poor, to find stable work and affordable housing. They've lived in four different places in just over a year. Kay dreams of lifting her children out of poverty and of calling somewhere home. <laughs> paintball, paintball. They can take a few shots each, right? Good boy. Good shot. We got to take them to the polar bear ride. No, we don't have enough money to do some more. Yeah, the rest of the money went on groceries. Carl and I, this year, this is 2002, we won't even clear $10,000. There's eight of us. You know what the poverty line is for a single couple with no kids? I mean, we don't even make that poverty line. The Rice kids come from a long line of the struggling poor, starting with their mom and going back generations. I grew up in Toronto uh, in poverty, of course. My mother was low income. She raised us on uh, Mother's Aunts and uh, it was rough. My name's Joanne and I'm Kay's mother. I grew up in Cabbage Town in Toronto. My father was a wino. My mother struggled to keep her family together. My mother's mother raised nine kids and then my great-grandmother too. Yeah, and my grandmother raised her children on her own. So, and mom did the best she could that way too. So, it's going back generations of uh, being poor. In the beginning, we moved a lot because of my biological father beating my mother. My father tried to stab her, or, or he beat the shit of her, he drug her down the street by the head of hair. At one point, when he was kicking me and stuff, I remembered seeing my children on the couch crying. So I decided that that was it. Joanne left Toronto, taking Kay and her other children to small town Ontario. 
The cycle of violence continued with Kay's first husband. My first ex-husband actually threatened to kill my daughter. She was just a baby, and he held her over top of the stairs, and uh, he said he was going to drop her if I didn't give him the, the money for the groceries for him to go out drinking. You know, I gave him the money because I wanted my child, so yeah. I gave him the money in exchange for the baby. I've been through a lot. I mean, these guys have even put me through a lot, and I did everything I could to protect my kids. It's an H-E double hockey stick. Oh, we've been spelling it, Kelly. Then Kay met Carl Harriman. He's a quiet, withdrawn man with no money, few prospects, and a troubling inability to hold down a job. Again, let's go. Bring it! Bob, Bob, Bob. Bob. The good things I would say about Carl is he's not drinking and abusing her and the kids. Okay, he's not doing dope. You are not. You are right here. <laughs> no, I'm right here. Right here. Nope. Right beside, we right. have no children together, but he took the six kids on as his own. And for eight years, that's the way it's been. He's been their dad. Carl drove cab. Kay worked in restaurants and convenience stores. Their biggest concern was how to put a roof over the heads of their children. We haven't been able to find stable housing because most people won't take six kids. We moved a lot because of slumlords, bad living conditions. We lived in places that were full of cockroaches, uh, you know, bad wiring. They moved from Barry to Angus, hoping that this house they were moving to was a safer home for the children, a healthier home. And this guy in Angus said he would take us even. It was too small for us. He seemed really smooth and very nice guy in the beginning. He was willing to work with us. And it was a two-bedroom house, but it was $6.50 a month. It was very cheap. He was willing to take her children. She told him she had six children. He said, that's OK. Wait a sec. Yeah. When we open the door, that means we're ready. <laughs> Okay, we're ready, we're ready. So you guys do always sleep together? No, we No, don't. they like, they sleep together. We sleep together over here, and she, she sleeps on her bed. On my own bed. We need yeah. bunk beds, but I can't afford them right now. Ah, Mom, you shouldn't have said that. Why? Why, it's the truth. But, <laughs> okay, let's go in the boys' room now. Boys, okay. this way. In case you have it, notice the camera hogs there. Richard, you have to ask questions about it. Mm -hmm. No! No! Jump on the beds! Zachary! <laughs> I sleep right there with the teddies, and Alex sleeps on the other side. Yeah, and he's squishy. And Richard sleeps right here. Because he goes like, how do we sleep? Until no, we get our bunk beds. So Until <laughs> her room gets built. Okay, you want to know where I sleep? I sleep on the couch. My husband sleeps on the floor. <laughs> the house was too small for eight people. The bigger house next door, owned by the same landlord, was now vacant. The family moved in with the understanding that they would clean up the place and receive a month's free rent in return. I know it was in bad condition, but he said to me that he would pay me for cleaning it up and fixing it up, and, I, and that we'd work together and fix it. So how long have you spent uh, cleaning up the place? This is the seventh day now. Day and night. <laughs> it's, it's been hectic. It's, uh, it was pretty bad. Um, anything you can name for dirt, uh, including urine and feces and stuff, was in here. Um, no, this is actually where the cats were going in the bathroom. Seriously, there was, there was feces. But they may have been going there because maybe that had leaked in there. I went through that house, and I was not impressed. This is dangerous, too. You know, you I cut my hip on that already, I know. You know what? <laughs> Craig saw it. Isn't the flea market tomorrow? You should yeah. uh, I cut my see if you can't get a doorknob or something from one of them. So are you happy to move? Yeah. Yeah. Why? 
Well, because it's just a bigger house. It's and we got that much around. spiders. <laughs> <laughs> How come you have paint on your face? Because <laughs> I'm uh, painting the walls and the roof. How come you're painting? We're trying to get rid of the smell from the house. So do you hope you stay here for a long time? Yeah. Yeah, we probably will do because the rent is really like low. It doesn't. It can cost like thousands of dollars. Like our hotel. This is it's only like six fifty a month, so it's really easy. So you guys are all good helpers, huh? Yeah. 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 We put a lot of money. It was over a thousand dollars anyway. We had bought everything from mops, brooms, gloves, J cloths, you name it, clean supplies. <laughs> so this is your new room, Zach? Yeah. Is it better than your old one? Yeah. What's better about it, do you think? It has a mirror in it and it's bigger. There's a better closet and there's lots of room. April 18th is when I knew everything was over with the landlord. The deals were off and everything. The landlord is at the door asking for the rent. If there was a deal for free rent and cleaning expenses, he doesn't remember it. Some of these weren't livable. There was, there was mold and mildew and feces and urine, and it was just disgusting. But I have no money left. Well, like, no, no, no. I, I got work. the last of my no, change. I just, no, I just know where to work. I yeah, they're... Uh, I she has to pay the money up front for the rent now. So for the two months worth of rent, so whatever that is, it's like uh, $1,400. She can't afford that right now because she spent the $1,300 she did have on fixing this place up. And she, she's got all these receipts saying that how much money she spent on the place, like on this much on cleaning supplies, this much on this, and he won't give her any of the money until she pays all the money. But she doesn't have it. She spent it. And the baby bonus says she get, does get tomorrow. She's asked to feed her kids and everything else on for the next month. So do laundry, everything else. So basically he says she's screwed. He told me, I swear to God is my witness, he said to me, when this all went down on April 1st, he said, can you handle the cleanup and fixing up the house and I'll pay you. So where's my pay matching today? Okay, he's not mentioned because he's not going to pay me. How much is your rent? 650 to him. My day bonus is only 100. No money for food or anything. Why can't you just give him some money tomorrow and not all of it? Tell him no. I can't give it to you. Because I have to do things legal. I have to physically hand him 650 dollars and say I paid my rent. If I don't, then he's going to do his thing. Ditch the bitch, is what he said. Yeah. That's his exact words, ditch the bitch. If I call any inspectors or anything in here, it's just disgusting. What's ditch the bitch? Who says that? That's not a professional talking. That's not a, that's a bully talking. That's somebody who's threatening somebody. How, do you, how did that make her feel at that time? That was in reference to her. Those six children knew that was their mother he was talking about. You outside to play? Yeah. Why? You want to play the game? No? Just when it seems things can't get any worse, Carl Harriman, the surrogate dad to Kay's children, loses his job driving cab. My name is Heidi Minuti. I am the French teacher at Our Lady of Grace School. The Rice family with those children, they were always so happy. They were always cheerful. They were so polite at school. Very beautifully raised children. Uh, Sister Heidi, would you read the opening prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us reflect on the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Heidi is a volunteer at the St. Vincent de Paul Society, 
It's a Roman Catholic relief agency that offers immediate help to the poor. We went on that call. When we entered the home, I met these children. They greeted me with, Madame, how are you? Bonjour, Madame. And my first shock was, these are my students. And I looked at their living conditions and I said, these are their learning conditions. How can they learn? How can they reach their potential? Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Nice, nice to meet you. Heidi from St. Vincent de Paul. Thank you for coming. Okay. You're very welcome. Everything else was in such disarray. Um, that was so out of character with the nicely dressed children that came to school every day. How did you manage to pay your, your, your rent and your hydro? Um, well, this has only happened in the last few weeks, so we were paid like we had money coming. He was driving up. cab, yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, he did have a job. He just recently oh, lost just, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Asked the usual questions, and suddenly there was a big noise. Oh, see. That's the house falling apart. See, that was <laughs> Oh. What? <laughs> the house just fell apart here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry. Are you on mother's allowance at no. this moment? No. No social services whatsoever. Okay. What is coming in at the moment? Uh, for us working, nothing. The Canadian government is not child friendly, not family friendly. Oh, oh definitely. That's what we're finding out. Well, thank you very much. Thank it's you. Been a pleasure, eh? yeah, we'll thank you. <laughs> thank you. I think I decided personally I wanted to be assigned to the case. Bye, kids. Say bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Today they gave us uh, a clothing voucher as well as a food voucher. So it was very nice of them. Like many in her situation, Kay could apply for welfare, but doesn't. That's because she would lose most of her baby bonus check and would have to account for any outside income. Financially, she'd be no farther ahead. It'll be like maybe one of those dollar day things and grab a few things for $25. Caitlin? Doesn't Ellen need shorts or Brianna? Ellen's fine. She had a lot last time. So it's Zachary and Alex. If we'll be lucky if we find Richard a pair. One thing about having six kids, if it doesn't fit one, I guess you fit another one. <laughs> 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 Just grab a bunch of clothes. Yeah. Barry's soccer club. I can pretend my kids are in sports, can't afford it, but I can pretend. Can I have one? You cannot have those. Don't even go there, camera on or not. For myself? It's been years. I never buy anything for me. Always the kids and my husband come first. Even when I've had a job and I, I still buy secondhand for myself. I found a pair, Mom. For who, Zachary? Zachary. Ooh, except they have a lot of dirt in them. <laughs> <laughs> They're size two. Go look for another pair. He needs something a little better than that, too. Let's go. Zachary or Brianna? Uh, I don't know. Pick a number from one to ten. Wait. No, give go. it to Brianna because there's other cute ones in there for Zachary too. I got some for both of you. Oh yeah. <laughs> My number was seven. Here, Richard. Stop, here's the up. swimsuit I. Richard, here's the swimsuit I found. If it'll fit you. you can we and someone go down to the dollar store over there and see if they have any dollar nine volts? No. We don't have any yeah, money. Look, look, look at me, look at me. Capiche, look. Oopsie no came money. Off. I know. Well, there you go. It's got to be in style. It's got to be cool. So, would you like to make fun of at school? It's Mom. not for school. This is for summer. No one's going to beat you up. There's no one going to pick on you. That's why I got these clothes. It didn't matter if it would look like a Zachary's. <laughs> Summertime, you don't get beat up, so you can wear them for the summertime, Alex. Alex has been singled out by a schoolyard bully because of his clothes. He was always beating me up and uh, swearing at me and stuff. And then and the principal was always saying, deal with your own situations. When you're in poverty, <laughs> kids are the meanest people. So you can actually get beat up for not having the in clothes or you know, the $100 pair of shoes. 
I got beat up so bad one time because of my clothing, I had to be taken to the hospital by uh, two 19-year-old girls who thought my clothes were gay because I couldn't afford the expensive clothes everyone else wore. So, yeah, that was pretty bad to be taken to the hospital. Didn't mean that it didn't leave a real serious impression on my daughter that, you know, when you're poor, you're not, a, you're not even a person. Zero money. As for food, a couple of days' worth of food, probably. And uh, some change in this change bucket here that may have bought a few loaves of bread. Kay can't pay the May rent. She spent it on fixing up the house. But the landlord still wants the $650. He started sending us threatening letters and everything. Like, to us, they were threatening. And they'd be dropped off at, like, 2 in the morning. The landlord threatens Kay with the Children's Aid Society, saying the house is unfit for six children. When I was growing up, when, when, when my guys were growing up, and this Children's Aid's always been the boogeyman. Even the children knew that that was a threat for children's aid. They saw what was in that letter. They saw the words children's aid. What else are they going to think? They're thinking their landlord's going to put them in the children's aid. He had all kinds of power. He was proving that. He's spooking you because he's showing up in the all hours of the night or anything, uh, dropping off these letters. So you never knew if he was looking in on you or you know what I mean? Like, it was just scary to have that. But you can't sit around and feel sorry for me and, uh, oh, I'm going to sit here and complain about everything. Somebody has to get up and take a stand. And I'm tired of people stepping on me and treating me like I'm nothing. I am a somebody, and so are my children. And that's who I'm fighting for. Who <laughs> would love you? I would love you, Mom. You better love her. No, I don't love you. Tired of feeling pushed around, Kay decides to fight back. She will take her landlord to the Ontario Rental Housing Tribunal. He had made a deal and broke it. So there was no choice but to take him to the tribunal. And he was a bully. I mean, bullies need to be stopped. She wants her money back for fixing up the house and compensation for harassment. Kay can't afford a lawyer. She applied for legal aid, but says she was turned down. Heidi helps her prepare. To prepare myself for the tribunal, I had to go read as much as the Tenant Protection Act as I could. So yeah, I had to uh, teach myself everything I could about the laws and try to take care of the family, look for a place to live and, and keep my sanity. At the tribunal, you don't get anything free. You have to pay for it. If you don't have any money, tough. We didn't have the money, so getting back and forth to file the applications, OK, a couple of them, T2 forms, were free. Others cost money, and also cost money to get a ride. 20 bucks a pop to get driven one way or whatever. One day, we even had a walk to bury, you know, in the, like it was over 40 degrees in the summertime. <laughs> The landlord ups the ante, accusing the Rices of wrecking his house. He wants $10,000 in property damage and files his own claim with the tribunal. I mean, there was no damages. There was nothing. We didn't do anything wrong. We did everything right. It's just uh, he was trying to put it back on us. Oh, no. Hi. Hey, how are you? Is this an electrician? Yeah. May I see your ID, please? Go ahead. To show who you are. <laughs> You can turn that off. An inspection is ordered by the landlord. He says it's to ensure that the place is safe, but the Rices see it differently. That was intimidation. That was his way of showing my daughter that he had the power. And he could do whatever he wanted to do.
Kay and Carl head for Barry to file tribunal documents. They've borrowed Heidi's car. Richard is left behind, upset by the intrusion. Angry. <laughs> Very angry. Makes you not look forward to being one, I guess. Not wanting to be an adult. Because you could be in my mom's situation, being walked all over or being trash. And I wouldn't want to be either. Oh, that was the computer. That was the computer. That ain't good. Since it ain't plugged in too much. They were always afraid of them. I think any kid would be afraid of something like that when you see like somebody in power, because obviously he's in power because he's you know got control over your house and that. The only thing we have found that is a safety issue is you can't use an extension or a two-prong extension cord for your for your uh, air conditioner. It's got to be a three-prong extension cord. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. All right. Bye. Bye. What is there to say? Thanks for all you put me through and everything. If I can make him do something, I'd make him pay back all of the stuff that he's taken away from us, like all this time and energy and money that we put into this house. If you had your choice, where would you want to move? Probably, I wouldn't even live in Canada anymore. So why are you here today? Because he's been a bad landlord. So you're having fun right now? Mm -hmm. How do you feel right now? Uh, sort of, sort of bad, sort of in between happy and sad. Maybe the truth will come out and win. Mm -hmm. The truth always comes out. It doesn't always win. Eventually, yeah. Sometimes it seems too late. Okay, I'd like to uh, call this hearing to order. Kay and Carl are being helped by a paralegal student. This is her first meeting with them, and she knows little about the case. What was the condition of the house? Deplorable. How's can't... this relevant here? What we're trying to determine is rent or rears owing. And what I'm trying to determine here is the tenant had indicated to me earlier that there was an arrangement that whoever rented 145 would get one month's free rent. Since she had moved into 145... Well, we'll bring it out through evidence submitted right. by your client, not through submissions that you're making. Go ahead. So when you spoke... Yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep this focus as you can I'm appreciate trying. it. Okay, go ahead. Are these receipts from... Yeah. What are these receipts for? Um, for mops different cleaning products. This is going to be tough slugging to go through these things, one hedgerow at a time, I think. So since the tenants moved in on April the 8th, how much rent have you received? Nothing. Okay, and when did this... One, when, when one, did 145, there is no tenancy. It is, there is no agreement for tenancy. There has never been an agreement for, for, for tenancy. That's all nonsense. He most certainly did. So he was there. I mean, he was there while she was cleaning the house. <laughs> the landlord offers a deal. Thank you. He'll drop his $10,000 claim for damages if the Rices drop their case and move out. No, can't go out. I know I said that. I, said, I swear to God, as my witness, that this man has, has we, we did pay our rent. I swear to God. <laughs> we shouldn't lose. Oh, my God. No. Okay. Don't believe this shit. Just relax. Just get it in your room at the time. He's going to try to get it adjourned right now. 
I said, because I'm not giving up. He has put us to hell and back. I'm about to cry, I tell you. Kay refuses to drop her case for compensation and harassment. The tribunal adjourns until August, but issues an interim order evicting the family. They have to be out on July 31st, six weeks from now. The landlord has won the first round. Did you get that tent yet? <laughs> you know how much a tent costs? Yeah, 300 bucks, they already looked. We're getting away from our bad landlord. I'm not really happy about my school because I'm going to miss all my friends and stuff. Oh, we got sliced. I had a hairdresser one time for my hair, and I'll start falling out. Should we create a spiral? Curl hairstyle. Please see the directions in this booklet. Yeah. Then follow the easy winding directions below. Okay, hair like that. Mm -hmm. Go. Who's that, Caitlin? Yeah. What else are you buying? My skin. The moment they heard that they had six children, because Mrs. Rice always asked for four bedrooms, and uh, mentioning that there were six children involved, uh, the landlords, uh, even the worst slums, not one of them was interested to rent to the family. So what's what's the fourth house? I thought there was three last night. Eleven ninety five. There's two four bedrooms, one three bedroom, and another three bedroom over here. What's the other four bedroom? How much is it? Twelve fifty. And when's the other one available? The four bedroom. Same. August? No. July first. Yeah. And the rent was thousand dollars plus utilities. They were dirty. They were dilapidated. They were hardly any better than what they were living in in Angus, but they were determined to get a roof over their head. No answer to that one. No yeah. answering machine or anything. Okay. We probably went through like 100 places or better. <laughs> and if you were lucky, some of them showed you their places and then turned around and told you. Like on the phone, they'd say one thing to you, then they, you get them in person, and it's like, well, it's not suitable for six kids. Hi. Do you have a house um, for rent, a four-bedroom? They're just too concerned that uh, you're going to destroy it. Hi, Brenda. It's Kay Rice calling about your four-bedroom house. If you'd call me back, please, if it's still available. Thank you. They had no uh, summer holiday to give them a little bit of a break from the uh, blighted lives they were living. They already feel like it's their fault that their mom can't get a decent house to rent because she has six kids. The only people that'll rent to her are slumlords. What's that telling these children? It's telling them they're not worth anything. They should have a child's life. They should be fairly carefree without all this nonsense of the world on their shoulders all the time. So their situation is desperate, and their situation cannot be resolved overnight, not with the um, social services available. The poor are up against the wall, the poverty wall. And to surmount that one is an uphill struggle. And they do need our help. They do need, they do need our compassion. What can I do for you? I need um, to know what kind of help you can offer me. Um, we're being evicted from the house we're living in at present. And we are um, fighting it, of course. But in the meantime, it's costing us a lot of money. And my husband's just lost his job. So I need to know if there's anything that you guys Mine. Yeah. Okay, um, there is the funding, okay, that's come down from the government. I'm going to ask for $500, and $500 is the most. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, well, how much money do you really need? 
This is what we need. By the end of July, life. at most, I could have about sixteen hundred together, and there is no possible way to rent anything for that and bury here. Okay, now it says if they only lend you part of the debt, how would you obtain the remaining money? Well, like I said, the child tax. That's going to be part of it. I have 300 in my purse right now. I can show you $300. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a yard sale and sell everything that's not necessity. So I would never mm -hmm. sell beds. Um, no, and you're not going to sell your, your I wouldn't basics, sell basic basics. necessities of life. Yeah. No, I would never sell that. But I would sell all the movies or anything extra we have in our house. Well, really, um, I would just put, um, if we loan you only part of the debt, how would you re obtain the remaining money? I think we just want to put down impossible. It's impossible. You can't be selling off your your part of life. Okay, you can't be selling. That is your part of life. That is your history for your children. You can't be doing that. So, okay. So I think we're just gonna write in impossible. Have you attempted to negotiate? Oh yes, you have. That's why you're up with Kay is offered $500, oh, yes. but only if she gets a letter from a landlord agreeing to rent to her. She fears that would label her as a welfare case. Just ask the landlord to fill this out for you. Oh my God. You don't want to do that. No, that's as bad as a worksheet for welfare. Uh, Thanks, Dot. No, no problem for that. No. <laughs> We're willing to work whatever we can, okay? So, what are you doing, Alex? I'm hanging up the poster for the yard sale. Here, you do that side, I'll do this. Okay. I'll write sale and you write yard. Yeah, so... All six of my movies and uh, my skateboard. We, do, we had to do, we had to sell everything. You know, they weren't overly upset because they knew at some point it could be replaced. Material things can be replaced. People can't. Come on, follow me. Okay, okay. I'll joke What Trunk. do elephants and trees have in common? Trunk. Whatever. I think it's a good learning and growing thing for them really? if, if they, oh yeah. It, if they have to, yes, you have to do whatever you have to do to survive. Kay makes a promise to her children. If they sell enough juice, they can go to the Angus Fair. Start selling. Be happy. It's hard sell. though. Yesterday, the food Some rich guy might come along and give you a hundred dollar bill for a glass of juice. Yeah, right. Just do it. Yeah, that's a miracle. The yard sale goes on for two days and brings in barely five hundred dollars. The kids sell about five dollars worth of juice. Packs up and leaves town. Well, she promised, but she can't because we need groceries.
What time do you have to be out of this place by? 12 o'clock, midnight tonight. Hello? Hmm? Yeah. Kay calls with bad news. Their last hope for a place they could move into is gone. Okay. No. She's really upset right now. Is she? Yeah, she's, is she freaking there? Oh yeah, she's gonna freak for me. Yeah. I got no fucking place to live. July 31st was the day for us. And we knew at that point they had to get out of the home. We did not have accommodation secured at that point in time. So uh, we uh, scoured campgrounds, trying to find um, a, a place in a regular campground, and they were all filled up. It was the height of summer. Kay has a brother in Barry, but he doesn't have room for them. He will let them camp in his backyard in tents donated by St. Vincent de Paul, but he wants $200 a month. They're trying to charge us like anywhere from $200 to have to live in the backyard in a fucking tent. And they could be out tonight spending 200 bucks on bingo, trying to win 5,000. Like, I mean, I've never seen, I've never been more disgusted in my life than I am at this particular moment right now. And that Heidi had to hear it all. Because she only heard my conversation. She heard it all, right? She was totally disgusted by it. Why are they charging you? I said, because of the hydro. Like, we're going to use $200 for the fucking hydro, not even living in the house. That's my new dad. <laughs> no, he looks nothing like me. I'm not normally a violent person, but if a landlord had been in my face, I probably would have punched him out. Because he was forcing the kids to live out in the street and that. Like, he wasn't doing it to me, he was doing it to my kids. The innocent people, that all they did was help fix this house up. That really pisses me off. Watch out, there's glass right in there. We're living in a tent in my uncle's in, the, in his backyard. And, uh, because we can't find a house right now, so... Who's sleeping we didn't in this clean tent? It. The three boys. Me, Alex, and Richard. And look, there's a screen here. You can take off the top, and there's a pocket. And here, yeah, and you if you want to... see a window in this tent. But you have to go like this. So who's sleeping in there? Everyone. Me, Ellen... Everyone, Everyone except, except for, for the boys. Boys. We had to sort of sort everything out, put all the foods over there, all the clothes and all the all the accessories that we need over at that side right over the corner. And we just need to put something down on the bottom so no bugs get into it. She's already at the bottom of the barrel. My daughter felt like she had no self-esteem. She was not a good parent because now her children were living in a tent. I don't care. You get everything. It's not easy to keep your family together even when you're homeless. Like, especially then. I mean, it's a very difficult situation. And actually, I think a lot of people going through this would have probably jumped off the closest bridge to go through what I went through. Because it went through my head quite a few times to just walk out in front of a vehicle. So what do you do? The laws are supposed to be there to protect you. We don't feel like they're there to protect you at all.
the days were getting chilly and we had heavy, heavy rainfall. And unfortunately, the tents weren't leak proof. They were not waterproof. So Mrs. Rice had contracted a very bad cold. She was shivering. She clearly had a fever. All right, the party's ready to proceed this morning. Yeah. Kay is too okay. sick to attend the final housing tribunal. The job of making the family's case falls to Carl. To me, it's a classic case of the tenants want to live somewhere for nothing. They want to live off the efforts of, of others. It's our position that the tenant owes arrears of $1,950. I have maintenance and uh, interference with reasonable enjoyment, harassment, and illegal entry. Which, uh, Mr. Harriman, which application do you wish to proceed on? Oh, no, sir. Shortly after moving in, Carl was whatever. <laughs> he just lost it for some reason. Carl searches for the landlord's letter, threatening the family with the children's aid. It's starting to be like watching paint dry here. Let's move along. <laughs> this is a letter to Mr. Carl Harriman and Ms. K. Rice. He's threatening to call the children that he basically in this letter. And then the last sentence, what does it say in that same paragraph? We trust, however, we can come to an amicable and mutual friendly agreement in order to avoid unnecessary confrontation. Does that sound threatening? He's threatening you before, and the lines before, and then he, he apologizes. Basically, he apologizes for the next line. It's bullying. Hey, gentlemen, I thank you for your participation. This matter is adjourned subject to my order. I will issue the order as soon as possible. It will be another six weeks before a verdict is issued. The concern was, what school are we going to go to? Because school was coming up pretty quick. I mean, they were in there the month of August, so school was coming. And they didn't know where it was we were going to end up. Because she did not have a residence, that if the children's aid got involved, that they would pull those six kids and throw them into the system. If they ended up in the aid, then there's nobody that would take all six children into their home. That's not going to happen. They're going to lose their brothers and sisters, and they'll lose their mom. We must do something. So we resolved to step up our efforts to find them a permanent accommodation, and we tried. We tried. Oh, well, I'm homeless. Oh, well. like. I'm just going to keep going. It has to get better at some point. We are looking for work. We are looking for a place to live. There are jobs out there. I've proved it. I mean, just this week alone, I've been offered two jobs, but they're not enough. One in two days a week, these people are offering at six eighty-five an hour. So jobs are out there, but the wages are enough. I'm sorry. So I'd have to get three, four jobs easy. Hello? Yes, is it? Okay, so it's not a slummy area. <laughs> okay, it's it. Carl is calling to report on a house okay. in nearby Aurelia for $850 a month. Yeah. The cupboards are all brand new, everything's brand new. So it's freshly painted, brand new, everything in the house. It's been gutted and redone. Yeah. Have you told them we have kids? Okay. So now we have to lie to get it. Do we lie or do we tell the truth? The Rice family told the prospective landlady uh, in Aurelia they had three children. When I came down to her, after going through over 100 places, <laughs> we had to lie. We had no choice. We even had to say that uh, Carl was working, and he wasn't. They gave my name as a reference 
the landlady phoned here and it put me in a bit of a dilemma because I know they have six children. You do not give references that are untruthful. You do not do that as a Catholic teacher. So I said, yeah, I know all three of them. I did not say they only have three children, but I didn't tell the whole truth either. And um, I don't know if that is acceptable or unacceptable. It was a decision I had to make between me and my maker at that point. Certified check, uh, payable to the landlady, and uh, they had a roof over their head. And um, our prayers were heard. Nobody go in with their oh. shoes on. Oh, what? New appliances. What kind of shoes are there? It smells new and it has something in it. A roasting thing for roasting yeah. stuff. Like marshmallows. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Light yeah. on. Okay. And. So what do you think of this place, Zach? Eh? Awesome. There's a bookshelf. That's mom and dad's room. Yeah, as you see, there's a closet. You can put like knickknacks or stuff like that. Shoes off. Oh crap. Oh, oh. sorry. Oh God. Bless us, O Lord, for these I gifts we give at this feet from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our grade eight really class has more. Well, did people. you have a fun day? Hey, yeah. No. 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 How come yeah. you guys didn't yeah. ask uh, yeah. how my day went? Yeah. What was your okay. day like? I got a job. <gasps> did Just you see the <laughs> You got it. Eleven fifteen an hour. Yeah. Kay is working nights full time. She has to walk two hours a day to catch a free shuttle bus to the casino. I work in the VIP lounge, the Platinum Lounge. It's uh, for high rollers. And uh, I just bust tables and put out food and do dishes. Go. Okay, I wish for the for everybody to have a good time. Go! <laughs> Soon after the birthday party, the Rices received the housing tribunal's ruling. Kay is disappointed. At the end of the day, the adjudicator says we owed a lot of rent, which we didn't, and I know we didn't. Um, so I don't know where he's getting his figures from. And then he says he owes us because of the maintenance and repairs, not for harassment or anything else, for the maintenance and, and repairs. So we end up with $72.89 we'll never see. I think I know what you wish for. They didn't learn much <laughs> except the bullies win. That's what they learned. They thought we were gonna get our money back. We didn't. Well, why didn't we get our money back? I don't know. I mean, what am I supposed to tell them? Oh, we're poor, couldn't we're afford a lawyer. <laughs> truth didn't win. <laughs> you tell them to tell the truth all the time, and you think about it, they learned. The landlord bullied us around, he got away with it. Cost us all kinds of money, we were already poor to begin with, it made us worse. We had to lie to get this place. So what they learn? They learned all, all the opposite of what we raised them. Almost a year later, Carl is still unemployed and Kay is still working nights to pay the rent. The Rice family is facing an uncertain future, but at least they're still together. All I hope is that they turn out to be the best that they can and uh, just that they turn out to be good people. 
and if they get what they want in life. That's all I can hope for.